Well, thanks very much indeed. Welcome to the channel. I am Jim Ferguson, and I've got a fantastic guest with us here today. His name is John O'Looney. John, welcome to the channel. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I've been busy today. I'm in my scruffs today because I've been doing a little bit of manual labour, but it's lovely to be on here, and thank you for having me on, you know. Well, not at all. Second time you've been on with me, John. I have to say, the last time you were on with me proved extremely popular. There was a lot of people watched that, and... Um, you know, we talked all about a lot of things to do with COVID and what your your experiences were with all of that. But you've also been speaking out about something else that seems to be growing uh, exponentially every day. And that is the mass illegal immigration that's going on in England, in Wales, in Scotland and over in Ireland as well. I mean, it is quite literally off the charts. And a lot of people, a lot of people are saying, look, this isn't normal. There's something not right. This isn't just refugees coming in. These aren't people fleeing from some kind of war zone. These are predominantly men aged between 25 and 35, young fighting age men, as my old boss Nigel Farage once referred to them, and I think he's right. John, what do you think is going on here, mate? So I can tell you these are UN soldiers and they will be deployed by the WHO uh, when they announce the next pandemic lockdown. That's what's going to happen. They've been trained by British soldiers. They've been trained by the Black Watch Regiment. They were training them in Antalya in Turkey and in the east of Ukraine. Um, they're predominantly down to sergeant ranks. They're then shipped to France. They all sign the Official Secrets Act. Then they're ferried over. And the idea of them being ferried over is they're lost at sea. So they have to be, um, under international law, saved from being lost at sea, and that's why they take the route they do. The boats are housed in a home office compound, and uh, then they're shipped back to France on two British Hawley's firm lorries, and I can supply you the details of the reg numbers. Two plain, unsigned written lorries. Um, the pallets, uh, uh, the outboard motors are strapped on pallets. They go on one lorry. The boats go on to the other lorry, and they're sent back to France for reuse. I've got 11 gigabytes of footage. There's a guy down there, ex-military, he's been using drones and surveillance on them for a long time. And he sent me, I've got loads of, I've got so much footage of it actually happening, um, and I've got no one to edit it. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, I can give them that footage and they can, you know, make something of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I know what's going on. The home so, office are, they're doing it deliberately. Just just to recap, you, you've, got, you've got evidence that these boats that are coming in, they're, they're only doing that so to, so to meet some kind of or pass through underneath some kind of radar in terms of legislation. But yeah, these so are not... uh, if you're lost at sea, they're obliged to save you. And that's the idea of them coming over in small rubber boats is they're lost at sea. That's the, that's the maritime law. Yeah, so... so you're saying that these are not no, like, they're... normal illegal no, migrants? These... No, if you, if you think about it logically and, and kind of base it on a common sense approach, if you were fleeing war and tyranny... I don't know about you, but I would certainly take my wife and children with me. They're most precious. They're my prized asset. You know, they're everything to me. If you're going to war, you go to war with the lads. And that's exactly. these young men are coming over. They're, they're going to be deployed. They will be deployed. And people will see then, you know. And I don't doubt there'll still be some Muppets that will stand on their doorsteps banging pots and pans. Do you know, th thanking these young men for helping us, you know, because initially they'll be deployed in what's perceived or conveyed as a humanitarian role. Right, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I nearly fell off my chair when I interviewed this young man. His name is Niall McConnell. He's an Irish uh, political candidate. And uh, I was had an interview with him a couple of days ago, and he was telling me, and I'd been aware of this, but he was telling me that these illegal migrants are being recruited uh, for police. They're, they're illegal, right? But they're going to be given the the position of police officers in Ireland to and police Irish people. And to vote as well. And to vote. to vote. And to vote. That's what nearly made me fall off my chair. Because he said they just have to be, prove that they've been living there in any capacity, could be a tent, for the last six months. Yes. And they will then be allowed to stand in the elections and yes. become elected. Yes, yes. And you've Illegal got people, migrants. You've got people like Sinn Féin facilitating that. You know, what happened to Sinn Féin? Look, what happened one time, to them? At one time, Sinn Féin, a lot of people in America, they still don't, they haven't woken up to this yet. Yeah, yeah. At one time, Sinn Féin was seen as the political arm of the IRA. Yes. They were yeah, fighting for Irish republicism. They, Whatever were, they, were, they were fighting for Ireland. And now look they at it. They were fighting for Ireland. 
Now they're destroying Ireland. They are captivated and infiltrated by the globalists. They are now under the direction, Sinn Féin of Ireland, are under the direction of the globalists in the EU. Yeah. They're completely selling out their own country. 100%, yes. And you know what, John? I mean, I'm a Scottish Highlander, right? I love the English people, but there's a lot of there's a lot of people in the SNP that seem to have very questionable views about that. But I'll tell you what's even more questionable is they're 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 going about independence. Well, they're just like Sinn Fein. They don't want true independence. I I, I respect people that want true, true independence, right? I fought for British independence from the EU. I was yes. happy and proud to do that, right? But they're pretending to be nationalists. They're not. They are right in bed with the globalists in the so. EU as well. But of this course. is really this is this is terrible. This is now. You said, I mean, what, what, how many migrants have we got? How many illegal migrants do you think is in the UK at the moment? Um, I, I dread to think. I dread to think. I wouldn't be able to count. I don't. I deliberately don't follow mainstream news because for me, yeah. it's just a puppet show. It's theatre. It's something to laugh. Well, here's at. the thing: the government don't know. They say they don't know either because they're not tracking it. What? Yeah, right. Exactly. So what's so are we talking about, you know, our police and our military are actually going along with this, John? I mean, you say you've spoken to people in the Black Watch. I mean, the Black Watch, a very famous, you know, regiment. Um, yes. Are they actually going along with this? They've got no choice. Well, I, I kind of said, you know, why are you doing it? And he said, soldiers follow orders. Even to the destruction of their own people and their own country. So there's a recruitment process that takes place when in any military... And there's no right or wrong answer. And what they'll do is they'll get a candidate in. They'll say, listen, if I gave you an order to kill your your comrade, uh, would you do it? And there's no right or wrong answer. Some of them say, oh, no, of course I, I wouldn't. And they go, oh, good lad. And they go one way. And then you'll get one of the others that will go, oh, yeah, I'd do whatever you told me. Good lad. And that's how they, it's a grooming process for the most psychotic people. And, and what would it take to do that? Um, money? Fear? And the promise of a seat for, for, for you and your loved ones on the ark, you know. Uh, why would people do that? There's no other reason. It can only be money or fear or the promise of a seat for you and your loved ones. What's happening in Ireland? I, I know I went over there and I spent time with uh, a lot of the Irish Republicans there. I was going round into places like Ross Cray. I was in Limerick. I was in Dublin. I went on a march with over 10,000 patriots. In fact, I was even asked to speak on the, the steps at the Garden of Remembrance where it all kicked off, where the whole thing happened in 1916. It, it felt, uh, I felt chills, you know, and I, I, I'm not Irish, I'm a Scottish Highlander, but I was made very welcome because traditionally, you know, uh, we, we've never had any, any, any access to crime. But I mean, when all is said and done, there is a real, um, a real need for patriots, regardless whether you're Irish, whether you're English, Welsh, Scots, 100%. whether you're Canadian, Fran French, it doesn't matter. We're no. all in this together. And old rivalries have to be not forgotten. We never forget our history, but they've got to be put to one side. People have we've to, got to uh, unite. People have to recognise their common enemy, you know, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's, it's, well. So, so um, I, I think um, they've played a very good game of divide and conquer for many, many decades and centuries, in fact, haven't they? And my Ooh. family originally uh, got Irish roots, were born in Cork. In Dublin, there and my great, my great great grandfather came over on a coal boat when he was twelve, because they were being starved out. Yeah, you know, I mean the so Irish, the Irish have gone can, through we hard claim, times. Uh, we can claim repatriations the way things are going. Do you know, it's John, ridiculous, you could it? go and sit in a tent for six months and then stand for Irish Taoiseach, which is like yeah. the president of Ireland. I mean, I think you should. I'd vote for you. I could uh, go so and uh, you know. To be honest, I, I've, I'm very much of the opinion that people who seek power are the ones that shouldn't really wield it. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah. those that are the, the most corrupt, they're, they're ambitious and they actively seek it. You know, if I was asked um, not to leave, but to help in decision-making process, I'd be more than glad to do so. And, and I have an intact moral compass. I wouldn't do it to line my pockets and to feather my nest. I'd do it for the good of everyone because I see these things as a responsibility to leave a legacy. What should that legacy be? Should it be betrayal, death and misery? No. It should be serving the Irish people, and none of them are doing that at the moment. They've all sold themselves, haven't they? And well, it's, the, the, it's, it's happening shameful. in England as well. Yeah, it's, it's happening shameful. in England and Wales. It's happening across the, the developed world, isn't it? You know, Canada, Australia, um, the US, 
it's a deliberate act. It's clearly, it's almost like we've gone to bed and woke up and um, the world's become inverted. Yeah, you know, what well, is, I, I think I, it has. Well, I've spoke to a few peers in the last month or so um, who have been in touch, uh, and um, they seem to point the finger at communism. How true that is, I really don't know. It's above my pay grade. Um, but certainly something is very, very, very wrong. Um, and, you know, I hope people recognise that. Well, these young men of fighting age, they're going to be deployed by the WHO. And these people know that we're waking up and they know that we're starting to see something's very wrong. So I don't think it'll be too long after they're installed at the end of this month before they declare another pandemic and begin lockdowns, be that climate change or, or bird flu or whatever it be. It's going to I've, get I've, really dark. And it's got, to get dark. it's got to get dark for people to clamour to get back to the light, hasn't it? Well, actually, uh, it, it, you're right. That's a, a really quite a good point you've made. It reminds me of a conversation I had about something else. But, but I mean, when you think about what you're saying there, you know, the WHO are trying to get this, this WHO pandemic treaty ratified. They're trying to get it through and passed. Mm. That is going to give... Dr. Tedros, who's not even a doctor, he is a psychopath. Uh, a dupe. Well, he is a psychopath, but he's also a former member of the People's Tigre Liberation Front, which yeah. was a highly violent terrorist organization. I mean, the data is all out there. Anybody who wants to go and yeah. check? Yeah. And he's not, by the way, he's not a medical doctor. You know that. Yeah. But a lot of people still don't know. And the other thing is that the World Health Organization, the WHO, are funded to the tune of 86% by Bill Gates. It's not an independent organization, John, is it? If you uh, if you look at the science, it always leads to the money, don't it? You know, it's it's. But I, I think the trouble is, is people in their very nature now they're lazy, aren't they? They're more interested in the latest football result or who Mike Tyson is boxing or Love Island or this distraction, distraction, story after story to keep you away from the real news. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a boxing fan, John. I, I follow the boxing, but, but well, I've got one eye on that, but I've also got one eye on what's going on. And we've all got to start thinking about it. And you said this earlier on, which reminded me of another thing, somebody else. I mean, a good a good, a good, good friend of this show, actually, Godfrey Bloom, he said, when people's tummies are full, they don't go to the barricades. That's I mean, right. he just said that in an interview I put out today. He basically, and what you're saying is, once again, until it starts to impact people, they're not going to wake up. But the problem if it doesn't is, touch you, then they're not bothered. But but by the time it does, it's too late. Too late. Yeah, exactly. This will go down as a biblical crime. Um, we I do foresee victory. I see that at very great cost. Um, but we will see it. And people, I think the world will become closer than ever when we do um, see victory. It's going to come on the back of a load of bloodshed. And unfortunately, it has to. Because people just won't see it until that starts. And it will Richie, start. Richie Sunak says he can't stop the boats because of the ECHR that legislation. It, no, he can't stop the boats because he has no power to do so. As Sir Graham that... Brady said to us, it's a way above my pay grade when we talk to him about the misery and the death that the COVID jabs, of course. There are pay, there's a, a, a pay structure, there's a pyramid structure Rishi Sunak, there are many levels above him. He's just a puppet master. He, he's just a puppet. The, the master's pulling the strings. They're the ones who decide. It doesn't matter whether it's Labour or Conservative in government. They'll both do what they're told to do without question. Um, so there is no democracy, just the illusion of it for the goyim, for the cattle. So it actually doesn't make much difference who we vote for or whether no, we vote no. simply because... Uh, uh, you could have an independent, but the bottom line is, do you know what? They all need tearing out of Westminster. They need pulling out physically and the whole structure, dismantling and rebuilding from the bottom up at community level. We need things like uh, proportional representation, uh, for example. I'd like to see that. And I'd also like to see people vote for policy, not politicians, because policy isn't corruptible. Politicians very clearly are. Look at what well, they're doing. And, and they're on both sides of the house, uh, on every side. And uh, one of the things, John, uh, that, that that you mentioned there about this, this effectively the standing army, this UN orchestrated standing army that's coming into the United Kingdom and Ireland and Wales and Scotland. These people are everywhere. Yes. You you reckon this is to what enforce the the new Bill Gates? Uh, world order because that's really what it's looking like he is he's the one that's behind the world health organization yeah. he's the one that's pulling the strings uh, well i think what you're going to see is the following we'll have uh, a minister somewhere in cabinets um suddenly come up with a great idea on how we're going to um, get these guys to contribute to help us 
and they're going to put them in uniforms. So, so a couple of people have told me these uniforms are burgundy. Others have told me they're UN blue. Um, I really don't know. I guess we'll see when they deploy them. They are going to be deployed. Uh, and I won't take any pleasure in saying, that I, you know, I, I told you I was right because I've no one's wanted to be wrong more than me. Uh, and I don't doubt that when that happens, people will say to me, you know, how did you see it? And I'll say to them, how did you not? You, you know, it's, it is what it is. And I, I part of me, I, you know, I don't want violence. I don't want death, misery. I'm 56 years old, so I'm past my best as regards a good fight. You know, I can still row, but I wouldn't want to. And I suspect these well, I, I, I reckon you've got a, a, a good right hook there with you, John. I, I would say. Oh, I, think you've... <laughs> I can, I can, I can row if I have to row. Um, but, but the the bottom line is, is it has to get to that. I think it will have to get to that for the sleepers to wake up, and that's right. what's going to happen. I can tell you, these guys will be deployed because otherwise, uh, if they announce another lockdown, what would everyone say? They'd say bollocks, and they'd go about their business, wouldn't they? They're going to need yeah. armed young men in uniform to try and enforce it. And that's what so we're, we're facing. So ship, the United Kingdom, a, yeah, they're shipping in a battalion a day. The United Kingdom is facing um, a UN standing army, which are really well, well, what you would you would say were illegal migrants, but they're perhaps yes. there's there's more to it than that. Well, there's a to subjugate, yes, to subjugate and to intimidate and to police and enforce globalist policies here in the yes. UK. That's exactly what it's going to be. Yes, that is the plan. Um, and, and why do they import young men from the East? Because traditionally, if you want to kill um, and tyrannize white people, you put black soldiers in. If you want to kill and, kill and tyrannize black people, they put white uh, soldiers in because there's a cultural disassociation. And that's their method. That's the way these globalists are going to do it. Um, I still don't think they've got enough in yet. Uh, I still don't think, I think they're going to struggle. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed. And you'll know, uh, I think one of the main pointers for me is the price of gold. And that sounds bizarre, but when the price of gold starts rocketing, you'll know that people, there's supply and demand. So why is the price going up? Because people are turning fiat currency, which is worthless, is toilet paper, into gold bullion because they know what's coming. They know what's coming. They can tuck that away and ho hopefully retain their assets because the, the way the world's going, we're all in big trouble. But only the truth will set us free. A and, you know, I may not live to see it, um, but I feel very humbled to have been a small cog in a big machine that's going to bring this globalist down. We are going to, and we're going to get them. We are going to get them. They're, all, they're going to lose everything. Yeah, I would agree with that. Now, do, do you think that they're going to sort of try and create a perfect storm? Do you think that's what we're witnessing? We're yeah, 100%. Potential... I, I mean, we're, we're seeing whether you want to talk about it or not, weather manipulation, that's happened. So what's the, the end result of an extremely wet spring is 20% of the crops have gone in, in the UK, which means there'll be more food shortages. I watched people in uh, supermarkets a couple of years ago fighting about a toilet roll. Yeah, yeah. When so, they don't have enough to eat, how, are they, how yeah, much more exactly. are they going to fight? Exactly right. that. And we're going back to, they won't go to the barricade till they're hungry, will they? Let's see what happens. I look forward to it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I can't wait because I know it's going to be the beginning of the end for them. You know, Mussolini got hung from a lamppost. Um, and whilst we never advocate violence, these things no. can't happen. When, when no. the people get really browned off enough, and oh, they will enough. be. They'll want to be very, very honest. These politicians, as they're being led off by a mob, they'll want to point the <laughs> finger and tell the truth. And it's too late. It's too late for that. They, they're too deeply late. entrenched. And I remember being at the meeting with Sir Graham Brady in Westminster on September uh, of 2021, and it was put to him at that meeting by more than one person present um, that when the people find out what's been done, there'd be civil war. When they find out their families have been killed off and their children sterilised, there'll be civil war. And he actually agreed. And he said now the you, government are prepared. Yeah, he said. You um, mentioned said that. They you won't said give that up the power. last. He said they won't give up power easily. He, he, he said, Sir Graham Brady said to you in a private meeting, I mean, there was probably others yeah. there. I remember you telling me the last time you were on the channel that yes. this is what he'd said. He and am I right in saying that he said something along the lines of, I'm surprised it hasn't happened already? Yes. Well, the government was surprised. So what they have is behavioural teams, right? And this is a, a group of people with very, very high cues. Uh, and they run uh, they run things past them. And they get a reaction or they predict the public reaction to 
things they're proposing, you know, and they right. thought that civil unrest would unfold during the lockdown. Um, and because it didn't, and because humanity all pulled together and said, all right, we'll lock down. It threw them on the back foot. They didn't know what to do. Really? Wow. Yeah, they, yeah, they expected, he said, they expected the, it all to kick off then. And because it didn't, they kind of didn't know what, so that now they're going to hit us financially uh, and the food chain and just keep s throwing in these illegal immigrants. Uh, and I suspect there's probably a little bit of mixing pot there where they want to start some civil unrest, really, to keep us safe with a digital ID, maybe. Do you know? Right. It's, it's, do you, they're problem do you solution think, they work on, don't they? Do you think that they're going to ship off the British troops to uh, the meat grinder, that is Ukraine? They've already done whilst, it. Well, yeah, but but on mass, right? There well, is no mass our... now. They're all gone. Well, there's hardly any. What is there? Thirty thousand? There's nothing well, left to what there was. Well, whatever's left. Can you can you imagine a situation to this? They ship them all off to the meat grinder that is Ukraine. Yes. There are no literally no British forces left here on on British soil. That's right. But there is a lot of all these UN backed migrants. Yes. Posing as migrants, but yes. actually they're a standing army. So there's yes. nothing to stop them. From being issued uniforms, Richie Sunak or Penny Morden or Keir Starmer or whoever other World Economic Forum globalist parasite decides to say, "Well, we're going to need to, you know, have the home guard and we're going to make use of all these these people." And before clearly, you know it, clearly you're asking to see. I've you to around. see. I've carried this around. to see your months. papers. Yeah. Show me your papers, John. Yes, yes, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Says somebody from Kenya, show me your papers. Who are you? You're, you're outside your 15-minute zone. Get home. Exactly. It's going to happen. And I've carried this around for over a year. I've known about this. I've been talking about it for ages. It's, yeah. And everyone well, said it... I, I was mad. They're going to... Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, they see it now. Yeah. They see it now. You know, in America, when it was uh, a colony of, of the United Kingdom, of Britain, mm. there was a, a revolution against British colonial rule. That's right. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of people didn't realize, uh, but it was only 3% of those people in America that overthrew the British forces and basically got rid of them. 3% mm. of the population, John. Yes. And there are academics and statisticians and other people who have, who are very much more clever than me that have also said all it takes is 3% of any population in any country and there's not a single police force or military that would stop them. Yes. Do you think that's right? Yes, I think it's definitely right. And I think um, the, the numbers would have to be slightly higher now because back then they didn't have the technology they've perhaps got now. But whilst um, it will be more of an uphill struggle, these people are doomed. I can tell you the peers have told me they're running around Westminster panicking. Now, they're when you panicking. say peers... Yes. When you say peers, do you mean members of the House of Lords? Are we talking about lords yes. here? Yes, right. yes. Christopher Monckton was one of them um, uh, um, and two other lords. And I've, I've gathered, I've been throwing them evidence, throwing them email tra uh, trials and information. And they've been gathering it that because I think these lords realise that in the new world order, they won't need lords. Do you know? So, they won't so, need you, lords and they, they won't, won't need, need politicians. MPs. They won't they need, need MPs. It'd be no, regional, they regional commanders, area commanders. They are, yeah. They're going to they realise. Looking, they're looking for. Um, they're looking for serfs. They're going to be the lords. The the world economic forum. Klaus is going to be the high lord, isn't he? Or or those like him. Maybe that. Maybe there'll be others that, that out, outrank him. Probably. Well, I I suspect Tony Blair's kind of waiting with bated breath to hear that <laughs> Swab's breathed breathed his last and uh, his consciousness has been uploaded to a new sleeve. No doubt. You know it's. <laughs> Tony Blair just can't wait, can he? Yeah, how is he, not in, a, how is he not in a prison cell? It's beggar's oh. belief. Yeah. We are in a very, very strange, turbulent world. And it, yeah. it seems that the evil is increasing by the day, John. But it looks like people are actually waking up. What do you think it's going to get to get people, enough people to wake up to say, hey, wait a minute, maybe that John O'Looney, maybe that, that Jim Ferguson were right. What do you think, think it's going to take? I think civil unrest. And once you realise what's going on, I understood pretty quickly it's a numbers game and only the people will save the people. And the only way they can do that is en masse. And there will be deaths. I remember going down to London in 2021 um, for the lockdown protests and, and seeing the... One second. And seeing the snipers in the windows overlooking Westminster. 
um, because I look because I've got eyes and I can see. And one of them actually had the, the rifle in the window. So, you know, I, I think there will be deaths. There has to be deaths. And these people will be martyred for the future that awaits us all. And we're going to be free of them. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. But unfortunately, it's going to get really dark and dystopian and unpleasant before we clamour to get to the light. And we will get there. It's always darkest before the dawn, is what they say. Of course John, it is. A hundred percent, Jim. hundred percent. And it's not a time I ever thought I'd live through. You know, I remember listening to my grandfather as he recounted tales. He was captured in Singapore by the Japanese in World War II. And he told me all about it in great detail. Some people, most people never talked about it. But I remember listening as a 15, 16 year old in disbelief and amazement and waiting for the next bit and, and, and not quite believing that someone could be so wicked to someone else. And here we are. We're living through it again. Yeah, and our grandchildren will listen to stories of what happened today and they won't believe it. They won't believe that people, but because we're going to prevail. We will prevail. I'm convinced. Um, um, I'm, I'm ready, mate. I'm ready. This WHO pandemic treaty is, is uh, I mean, we're only oh, was it a couple of weeks away, something yeah, like that, yeah, for, yeah. It, for it to be uh, ratified. Um, do how how quickly after that do you think that Bill Gates is going to phone up his mate Tedros and say, right, Tedros, call a pandemic? Because I don't know I, if you've I, seen this, but in in Texas there are reports coming out of H five N one bird flu, avian influenza that yeah. has jumped the species barrier. It's yes. now in cattle. There's also now data coming out to say it's actually in pigs as well now. Yeah. And they are worried because there is a health worker that's, that's been infected. There's no human to human sustained transmission yet. Mm. But do you think they're going to cause another pandemic? Maybe something like that? I was told it was going to be bird flu many months ago. And um, the, that information came via a guy whose best friend was a pilot. And he'd been flying oh. in commercially millions and millions of bird flu vaccines. And that was at the beginning of this year. Wow. And those bird flu yeah. vaccines were, were for yeah. pro poultry to be vaccinated, was it? No, no, for, for humans. For, for humans. humans? Yes, yes. So they, they're transporting they're already bird in the flu they're already vaccines. In. They're here. They're here. Here in the UK? Yes. Well, that ties into another thing that Bill Gates has been saying, that he's, you know, don't worry about disease X, you know, this next mystery pandemic that's mm. definitely coming, according to him and his wife, Melinda. But you know, don't worry, because they've already got vaccines for it. Yeah, that, of course. That kind of ties yeah. in with what you're saying. Uh, and these people are um, Satanists, and they're into numerology as well. They're panicking. It won't be too long after the end of May. And I kind of subconsciously have penciled in the 6th of June, because you're looking at 2024, 2 and 4 is 6, the 6th of the 6th. That's the kind right. of way they operate. I don't think it'll be very long at all before they're ushered in, because they know... We're waking up to them. They know public opinion and is against them. It, it would add, it would also be in time to stop a free and fair election in the United States, wouldn't it? Exactly that. These people are really desperate now. They know. They know. And I look forward to it. I'm actually quite excited because I want the chance to get at them uh, and get rid of them. Uh, and so that we can, we can lead humanity into a new era that's better and safer and, and led by a moral compass. Do you know, yeah. um, so I'm ready, mate. Let, let them bring it on. I want to see it. I want to see these guys out there because only then will people rise up and think about their kids. And, and they will. They will. It's only when we're on the brink that you see the best in humanity. You know, it's, yeah, I would um, agree. And, and do you yeah, know I what? If the worst comes to the worst and we don't see it, then it's not a world I want to be in anyway. So, you know, either way, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, it's a win win for me. I want it to come to a head now. Going, going back to Ireland for a second, because there's a lot of Irish people watch this channel and they're, they're uh, you know, I, and, and they know they've got support here. You are oh, an massively. English... Massively. I, you, love, you're I, an English, I love Irish people. I love them. You're an English patriot, but you've got the Irish connections there I've as got well, Irish John. blood in my veins, going around my veins. I've got uh, the most time for Irish people. God bless them. I love them all. Well, they're, they're, they're standing up, you know, they're waking up and they're, I, I know, met some and wonderful they, people. They've got my full support. And I can tell you, I'm, I'll be fighting this end. And if I could stand yeah. in the trench with anyone, I'd be honoured to stand with an Irishman. They're beautiful people. They are. They are. Well, you know, patriots all over the world, Canadian patriots, American patriots, wherever you are, you know, we've got to come together. And I think that's where the unity is, because they're always trying to divide and conquer. Oh, of course. They're trying to divide Black, us Black Lives Matter, 
homophobia, anti-Semitism, Palestine, you name it, divide and conquer. Once people of all colours come together and recognise their common enemy, we'll walk over these people in 10 minutes. Yeah. The only thing is that does worry me is that um, these these migrants that are here that have been put up in four and five star hotels, they're being mm. given benefits, they're being given he free health care, they're being given spending money, and they're going at the head of the queue when it comes to housing. And this is happening in Ireland. It's happening in the UK as well. Yeah. You know, they're getting preferential treatment, right? Mm hmm. What do you think uh, they will do? Do you, do you think they'll relish the idea of putting on a uniform and and, and telling the Brits whether they can go down a certain street or not? Uh, oh, asking for the papers? There will definitely be an element of them that will. I know many Muslims, um, and they're good people. So there's good and bad in everyone, whatever faith or colour of your skin it be. I think what these guys have to be mindful of is this. If our government can do this to its own citizens, what do they think the future holds for them when they've fulfilled their purpose? Like any tools in a toolbox, you get them out to do a job, then they're discarded. They're loose ends. They're going to be witnesses. Um, they ain't going to keep them. You know, they, they, they may well use them to placate, dominate and exterminate us. When that is done, they'll turn their gaze on them. So, you know, anyone, do you trust the word of baby killers and people that betray their own people? No. What would you say to the many veterans that are going to be watching this? Uh, what would you say to the serving soldiers and the serving police officers who say, well, we're only following orders? What do you say to them about what you've just come out and told us? Because, uh, you know, they're the ones that are stopping the people from getting to the politicians that are betraying their country. Yeah, they're the ones who are providing the security. What would you say to them? Well, there's uh, uh, many years ago, I watched a film called The Matrix. Uh, and it, it struck a chord with me, one particular point in that film. And it was the moment when Neo goes into the kitchen to see the Oracle. And above the kitchen door, there was two words. And it's a Latin phrase, and it's temet noski. And it means know thyself. And I remember at the time, I was never really into Latin. It resonated with me, and I couldn't understand why, to the point I had it tattooed around my navel. And I, words that I've tried to live by, and it means know thyself. You can bullshit whoever you like. But ultimately, you're honest with yourself. When this is all over and your child looks to you and they recount what's happened today and they ask you, what did you do, Dad? What are you going to tell your child? What are you going to tell your child? What will your legacy be? It's your The, the future is yours. You're going to map out now. Your, your actions will map out what you say to that child, you know. Um, I, either way, I'm going to meet my maker with a clean conscience. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not just what you say to your grandchildren, it's what you're going to say to your judge, because you're exactly, going to get judged. Exactly, let them do their worst, mate. Uh, they're going to be on two sides. There's two sides of the fence in there. What side are they going to be on? What are they going to tell their grandchildren when these troubles and this dark period is recounted? What are they going to say? They're going to have to lie through their teeth, aren't they? Or well, they're going to know, do there's... the right thing, and, and like I say, we'll be victorious. We all map out our own futures, myself included. And I know what the future holds for me. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, but that's the decision I made because I won't be complicit in genocide and democide and crimes against humanity. No, I not at any cost. They can come and get me tomorrow. It won't shut me up. There's another Latin phrase. It's carpe diem. It means seize the day. That's right. And with that, I'm going to, because we're, we're out of time, John. Can you believe it? I can't believe we've, this has gone past so fast. But I'm going <laughs> well, to give you, as I, uh, always, as I always do, I like to give my guests especially great guests like you, the last and final words. So, John, for the next two, three minutes, say whatever's on your heart to say. I would just say um, that in the coming days, you need to network. You need to get try and uh, – the aim I would go for is 20, 25 people. Try and get someone from each trade. If you've got a local farm, liaise with that local farm. Find out what you can do to get local produce cleanly uh, uh, and network because it's only um, people that will save the people. And the only way we can do that is getting back to some sort of community. Um, uh, tuck away non-perishable foods. Tuck away some water. Prepare. Prepare yourselves, you know. Um, uh, and the rest of it, just be kind to each other. Uh, and kindness is infectious, you know. If you're kind to each other, if you go in a pub and you smile at someone, you'll get a smile back. So, you know, go out in the day, seize the day, and, and um, try and do something nice for someone else and network.
Fantastic advice and great advice where, wherever you are in the world. And I know this truly is an international channel. We've got people from all around the world that follow us here. And we're very mm -hmm. grateful to all of, the, all of the people that do that, John. Uh, but I would just like to say once again, a massive thank you. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, you've got a great channel. I would encourage people to follow John Oluna. He, he really does call it like it is. And uh, he, he's a professional businessman. You're a funeral director and you've got a fantastic business. So, John, thanks very much indeed for coming back on the channel. Look forward to seeing you again soon. You're most welcome, Jim. God bless and take care, mate. God bless you too. And for all the people that are watching this just now, just remember it takes guts, it takes courage to come on to a channel like this and to tell the truth. And your help and your, your support is so very much appreciated. And I always like to tell everybody that you guys are the real stars of this show. So thank Amen. you one and all. Amen. Amen. This is Jim Ferguson. We'll speak soon. Bye-bye for now.